let's talk about the Joint Technical Committee of the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, or OPEC, which they concluded their one-day meeting preparatory to the broader Wednesday and Thursday meeting of the GMMC, the OPEC, the non-OPEC ministers' meeting. Let's speak to the OPEC meeting, the market outlook, and use an idea of separate petroleum latest earnings as a barometer. Well, Mustafa Wahab, oil and gas analyst at Chapel Hill Denham, is joining me this evening for this conversation. It's good evening. Good to see you, my friend. Um, thank you very much. Always great to be to be with you. Thank you. We appreciate you making the time downtown here. Give us your first word on Seplat Petroleum's full year 2020 earnings release of yesterday, Wahab. Um, Boston, thank, thank you again for having me. Uh, first of all, um, what we saw for full year 2020 for Seplat is that the company actually reported uh, a loss after tax of roughly $85 million. And um, obviously, um, that's not surprising. I mean, 2020 is a year um, it is, that is generally considered erratic. Uh, we enter a year where COVID-19 outbreak you know, basically affected you know, crude oil prices negatively. So the impact of that was what basically you know, uh, led to the loss that Seplat actually reported. Right. Uh, so to put the number in proper perspective, um, the loss that we saw in 2020 is the first in four years and is the second since the 10 year history of Seplat. I mean, the last time we saw the company actually reporting a loss after tax was in 2016, uh, where the combination of, you know, collapse in oil price and production basically, you know, uh, led to uh, material decline in, in revenue. And obviously on, on bottom line, I think at the time they, they reported around $166 million in loss. But unlike in 2016, uh, 2020 is just basically a case of you know, collapse in oil price alone. And that's basically the reason why you know, the loss in 20, um, 2020 is a lot you know, lower compared to what we saw at the last time that the company reported a loss in 2016. Um, uh, uh, just so I, I paint a better picture, um, so far since the release of the results, what we've seen is that you know investors have, have basically not reacted you know negatively on the numbers, and that's basically because of the fact that you know the market understands that 2020, 2021 is going to be a new growth uh, phase for Seplat. I mean, um, first of all is that um, I mean you showed uh, crude oil price um, um, numbers recently. What we've seen is that oil price is now approaching you know the 65 dollar per barrel levels, and the impact of that. Is basically driving some sort of robust oil economies for the company, right? Year to date, surplus share price is actually up by about 31 percent, right? But beyond that, anytime you attend, you know, surplus uh, management meeting or engage management, what you see that is constant um, and, and 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 consistent with the management of the firm is that one is that dividend paying um, 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 is actually very consistent for surplus. This year, they actually paid a total dividend of around 10 cents. Uh, beyond that, uh, we've also seen that management has actually continued to, you know, consistently find a new revenue stream by di diversifying, you know, away from oil towards gas. And lastly is the fact that management is also trying to de-risk cash flows through, you know, the launching of new evacuation routes. Uh, that's the, you know, um, Escravos, you know, pipeline, right? So the yes. impact of that is what is basically sh ensuring that you know, uh, perhaps be between now and the next few months, we will start to see some sort of positive reaction as far as Seplat is concerned. So what I'm saying generally is that investors understand that to pay play in Seplat, you would have to look beyond the results in 2020 and focus more on 2021, you know, multiples. Yes, that's what I was uh, also going to go to the issue of the cash position or cash flow that Sepla was able to achieve last year, despite that sharp decline in global oil prices, global oil demand, global oil supply. Um, thank you for that. Uh, so, Seplat has historically been a, a, a strong cash position kind of company. Uh, this year, what we saw was that you know cash flow from operation actually printed around three hundred and nine million dollars. But we noted that Seplat actually paid roughly hundred million back in RCF loans, right? And beyond that, they also spent around hundred and fifty you know million dollars in capex. Uh, so, the impact of that was what basically supported cash position. I think cash closed at around. $259 million over 2020. And the implication of that sizable cash flows for Seplat is that, I mean, as with many other, you know, sizable cash generating company in Nigeria, Seplat is basically in a strong position to basically capitalize on any opportunities for m as in the industry. I mean, you recall last year, uh, Seplat actually acquired Inland, and that's basically because of the fact that you know, these robust cash flows is there and they have, you know, sizable cash flows to actually carry out those sort of transactions. Over mm. the next few years, 
what we think is that that robust cash position for Seplat would actually uh, place the company in that sort of position to capitalize uh, on any M and A's uh, opportunity in the industry. Just basically, uh, but, you know, to, to transport the company towards you know the next growth phase. Yeah, but what happened? So looking at the books, do you think Seplat's days of very huge debts or leverage those days are over? Are they? Uh, I mean, it is unlikely. Uh, right now, what we know for sure is that, I mean, um, this year they've completed another round of debt raising series of, about, from about seven um, um, banks um, to, to complete that funding of annual gas projects. I mean, in as much as, you know, Seplat uh, is going to be, you know, involving in, you know, spending a lot of cash as far as, you know, drilling is concerned and also, you know, finding other, you know, revenue means, I think that they would continue to find a way to rack up, rack off our uh, debts. But right now, the good thing for Seplat is that they are not facing any material debt re repayment between now and the next few years. So that's what will leave them in, in that position to ensure that, you know, uh, they keep that, you know, that balance sheet, you know, quite strongly. So I don't think that, you know, uh, we would see any, any material reduction as far as debt is concerned. Once they see opportunity, I think debt and equity funding would be the next, you know, the next um, uh, key talks, you know, for them to, to quickly go into. Great stuff. So what about oil prices rebounding? Now, Goldman Sachs forecast 70 to $75 this year. What would this mean for Seplat and other indigenous EMP operators in Nigeria? Um, thank you very much, Bola, uh, Bosin. I, I think that we are not in house in Chapui. We are not you know, as, as aggressive as you know, all those big banks are. Uh, first of all is that, I mean, we understand that OPEC actually still you know, has that sizable you know, control as far as you know, direction of uh, oil prices concerned in the market, right? But what we think is that um, the one million barrels voluntary cut by Saudi Arabia is actually going to elapse after March. So the next key question is, what is going to be the key driver of oil price going forward? And what we think in house in Chapel is that, you know, uh, the extent of supply cost by OPEC would actually dictate, you know, the pace of price growth. So in house in Chapel, we are actually looking for, you know, oil price to average between 55, you know, to 60 dollar per barrels um, over 2021. And for Seplat. Uh, we actually have a realized oil price forecast for Seplat of around $55 per barrel. And if that should come to fruition, we think that Seplat can deliver at least $700 million in revenue this year compared to $520 million uh, that they actually reported over 2020, right? And we also think that that would also help, you know, return the company back to profitability compared to what we saw, you know, in 2020. And beyond that, you know, um, if you recall this year, Seplat actually reported you know, close to $140 million in, in, in impairment charges, right? You know, rising crude oil price this year just basically means that there are numerous opportunities for the company yes. to actually reverse those sort of impairments, you know, from the levels that we saw in the previous year. So, uh, uh, quick, quick one we have. OPEC meeting is tomorrow and Thursday. Would you support an increase of supply to the market? And by how many barrels would you say this should happen? I or mean, you want a stay of action? Uh, I mean, the market filler we're hearing right now is that um, the... Cartel would probably add another, you know, half million barrels per day, you know, starting from after March. And I mean, for me as well, personally, I think that, you know, it is about time for, for the cartel to start to, you know, gradually raise output rather than doing it, you know, aggressively. You know, right now, what we understand is that some shale producers are now starting to take market share from, from, from um, 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 the cartel. So it just basically makes, makes sense that, you know, they capitalize on this rising, oil, I mean, this robust, you know, oil price to just basically gradually, you know, raising production so that they can recapture, you know, market share. And that's where I think that the major risk for oil price would be. Um, right now, what we've seen is that, you know, um, between yesterday and today, we've seen oil price lose anywhere between 2 to 3%, right? That's basically because of the fact that market is now expecting, you know, the cartel to start to unwind, you know, that, that sort of production cuts. And I think it makes sense, right? But um, that sort of extent of supply cut of, you know, OPEC would just basically find a way to, to get a balance for oil price. So we're not looking at uh, for oil price to go below, you know, fifty dollar per barrel, irrespective, irrespective of, you know, what what the outcome of the meeting would be uh, on Thursday. Okay, so uh, what does that leave Nigeria at uh, this meeting for this week? Uh, for Nigeria, um, I mean, uh, as far as the budget is concerned, I think we are in a good position. Uh, I mean, that's basically from the oil revenue leg. 
Um, the key problem for Nigeria right now is obviously production, where we are not allowed to produce beyond 1.4 million barrels per day. So if you know, OPEC starts to you know, gradually unwind that sort of production cut, it just basically means that Nigeria would have some sort of leeway to start you know, raise production gradually, perhaps from 1.4 million barrels per day towards the 1.5, 1.6 uh, region. And that just basically means that you know, our budget implementation rate will be a lot higher compared to what we're expecting in Chapel Hill. Beyond that, that would also give the CBN the opportunity to you know, um, um, see a massive inflows of, of FX into, into the coffer and also, you know, provide them that sort of ability to continue to defend the currency at, at current levels. That's basically, you know, how we're seeing it um, in Chapel Hill. Uh, well, thank you so much for your time this evening. Mustafa Wahab, oil and gas analyst at Chapel Hill, Denham. Thank you very much for making it.